Hello everyone. Welcome back to Data Science Monster. Today we will discuss two important machine learning algorithms which always help us to control overfitting. You all agree with me that definitely overfitting is being a big challenge when we deal with the data sets, right? So now how can we solve it? So generally, uh, most of the times during the training, the participants used to ask me, like, how can we control it, right? So let's discuss about it so that you would get more clarity about it. So before beginning the discussion, let me tell you a small story so that you can understand it better. So you can see two friends here, Tom and Alex, who are planning for a trip. They have to pack their suitcases and what they figured out was like the suitcase is too heavy. So they are thinking for a better solution now. So first, what Tom does is he wants to pack all his items, but make it lighter. So he left all the heavy items and packed all the lighter versions instead. What Alex was doing, Alex was uh, uh, trying to do something different from Tom. He is more selective about what he packs. He decides to leave out some items entirely to make his suitcase even lighter. So he has carried the unwanted items also. But instead of heavy items, he is trying to carry lightweight items. But what Alex's plan is, he has decided to drop all those heavy items because he knows very well that it is really insignificant, which is unwanted for the trip. So he is completely avoiding it. So now, we can connect Tom with ridge regression and Alex with lasso regression. So let us continue with the algorithm to understand it better. Why ridge and lasso? When we have a lot of machine learning models like linear, logistic, K, and then SPM, ensemble models, everything. Sometimes we end up with overfitting models. How to control overfitting? That is where we have jumped into rich and loss of regression. So for this, I have taken a data set, MPG data set. So first I have imported NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and C1 packages. I assume that you are well versed with the machine learning libraries and packages. If not, please look into those videos and come back. I have posted already some videos related to Pandas as well as matplotlib and seaborn. So I'm just trying with the linear regression, rich and lasso. This is just to calculate the performance of the model. So let me load my data set. The problem statement is to find out the relationship between MPG and the other attributes. So this is MPG. Cylinder, number of cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, year, origin, car type, and car name. So if you look into this, origin cannot be numeric. So it is really important that what does this origin indicate? So let me proceed with this. Let me see the data types. So I could see a challenge here, the horsepower column, which is looking like a numerical. Here, if you see, it is showing like an object. So there is some challenge with this horsepower column. And here, car name is not really required. So I'm trying to drop that car name column. And I could figure out from the data team that in the origin column, one stands for America, two stands for Europe, and three stands for Asia. So I have replaced it accordingly. 
and just because it is categorical, I'm trying to encode the data set. Here I have gone with one heart encoding. So I was further exploring the half power column because I faced a challenge that where it should be integer or float, but it is displayed like object. So when I explored it, I could see that there are few question marks in the data set. So I'm trying to replace those question marks with the median values. So let us now go ahead with building the model. In the x-axis, other than dependent variable, I have taken all the attributes. In the y-axis, I have taken the dependent variable. I'm also going ahead with the scaling technique. Why the scaling technique is really important? Because whenever we deal with the distance-based algorithms, it is mandatory to do scaling. So once I have done that, I'm splitting my data into train as well as test. The test size I have given 30 percentage and also I have passed a random state here, which acts like a seed. So let me try to fit the linear regression model. So I could get the coefficients and the intercepts. And let me see the score of this regression model. I could see like 83 percentage and 85 percentage. So is it a good score if you ask me? Yes. Maybe other cases it may be right than that. Let me also see how this is going to help us. In this particular case, if you see that it is not, it is not overfitting. Let me run the codes once again and see how this is actually working. Again, I could see like it is giving me the score of 83 and 85 only, right? So there is no difference because I have passed a random state. So let me now go ahead with the correlation. I could see there is a challenge of multicollinearity here. What is meant by multicollinearity? The correlation between dependent variables. The correlation between independent variables is higher. So you can see here cylinder and weight 0 0.89. Cylinder and car type minus 0 0.91, right? You can see almost uh, like uh, the correlation between the independent variables has been higher. So when there is a challenge of multicollinearity also, we go ahead with these regularization models. Regularization models is nothing, whatever we are discussing now. So how the rich model works in general? So now if you look at this one, you can see an extra term here, right? This one. This is nothing but the penalty term. What this actually does, if you remember the story, we have seen that he tried to keep the weights of the item small to make his suitcase easier to carry. In the same way, this ridge regression model works, right? So now let me run with the ridge model. Here you can see a hyperparameter alpha, which I have passed like 0 0.3. If you want, you can change it. You can set it with the train data and I could get the coefficients now. If you check with the coefficients, there you could see some variation, cylinder 0 0.32, displacement 0 0.32, but you can see some changes here, right? So let us also build the model with the rich. Before that, let me also show you how Lazo works. If you remember the story again, uh, Tom, what he tries to do, he completely ignored all those uh, unwanted heavy items. So if you see here, this is the penalty term here. When I go ahead with alpha, again, you can change this also. You can see some coefficients has turned into zero. 
So which attributes would be turned to zero, which are all insignificant attributes related to the story. Here you can see, right here you can see the first person, Tom, right? What Tom was trying to do? Tom tried to reduce the heavy items. Instead, he was trying to carry the light weighted items. Lasso, right? Lasso, you can relate it with Alex. What Alex was doing? He knows that these items, he is not going to use it in the trip. So he completely ignored it, right? So now coming back to this one, you can see here, these are all insignificant attributes, right? Wherever you find zero, these are insignificant attributes. So let us now compare the scores. So you can see the first one, linear regression, we got 8385. Ridge, you can see again, same 8385. There is very small difference. But lasso, you can see like a 79 and 83. So if you see uh, there, it is getting reduced. But the point to be noted here is like uh, we are going ahead with a less number of attributes. So there is a possibility that the score may get reduced. So let us also now try with the polynomial regression. So here I'm going with the degree is equal to 2. So I have transformed the scaled data and I'm trying to fit the regression model. And also rich model like the previous case. Now you could see the score is like 91 and 86. Right, 91 and 86. So likewise, if we go ahead with the lasso regression, you can see again 90 and 86. So now this is really amazing because polynomial regression is actually helping for this particular data set. At the same time, when we have very large number of independent variables with the multicollinearity issues or overfitting issues, to reduce the number of attributes, we can go ahead with this regularization models. When there is multicollinearity or overfitting issues or feature selection methods, we can go ahead with the ridge and lasso. Hope it is clear. If you have any questions, please write it in the comments. Thank you.